to the virtual service for Luther Rice Memorial Baptist Church in Silver Spring, Maryland for this Sunday, April 11th, 2021. We know you have a choice of where to worship on Sunday morning, and we are thrilled that you have chosen to be with us this morning. As you experience today's service, feel free to use the chat or comment box to communicate to us all. And now... Let us prepare our hearts and minds for today's worship. Good morning and welcome to Luther Rice Memorial Baptist Church. My name is the Reverend Alicia Langhorn and I am blessed and pleased to serve as the pastor of this beloved Church of God. I invite you right now, whenever your right now is, to make sure you put your name and where you're worshiping from in the chat, whether you're on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. Let us know who you are and where you're worshiping from. We want to pray for you by name and by location. We thank God that you chose to worship with us today. We thank God and we believe that God sent you our way today, not by accident, but by God's divine providence. No matter if you are tuning into this at morning, noon, or night. Allow me first to say a special happy birthday to Sylvester Dumas. His birthday was left out last month. His birthday is April 20th. Luther Rice, let's make sure to show Sylvester love and thank God for giving him as a gift to not only this church, but to this world. While many of you think of Easter or Resurrection Sunday as something that happens one time a year, really, 
Easter, Easter Tide, Resurrection Day, is not just a one day, a one Sunday thing. It's actually a season, a part of the liturgical calendar that lasts for 50 days until the day of Pentecost, which I affectionately call the birthday of the church. For the next 50 days, well, 50 days minus seven, I want us to continue to go along with the disciples as they encounter the empty tomb. As they walk in the shadow and in the brightness of what that moment meant to them. And let us think about and engage in what transition, uncertainty, surprisingly chaotic moments mean for us during this time. We are transitioning as a church. We are transitioning as a world, not even sure about what tomorrow brings, but hoping for a better tomorrow. I just believe if we journey together through the resurrection narratives and the appearances of Christ through the day of Pentecost, God will show us even more than what we imagine. Speaking of imagining, beginning in June, let us imagine together. Whether you are a longtime member of Luther Rice, a new member, a friend that's been coming a long time, or someone who was interested in being a part of the work of God across the world through this church, I'm inviting you to imagine with me. Over the next 50 days, ask God to show you what are you interested in? What does church mean to you? What do you want church to mean to others? And then after we spend this next 43 days praying, we will meet together probably beginning the end of May, the beginning of June, and spend 30 minutes sessioning, imagining together what God wants from the both of us in the world today. So don't forget over the next 43 days that are left until we reach Pentecost Sunday, be praying, asking God to show you what you enjoy, what you like about church, what you want church to be for the future. Let us imagine because the word says that God can do exceedingly abundantly more than we can think, ask, or even imagine. Church announcements. Pastor Alicia will have office hours on Monday, April 12th from 4 to 6 o'clock p.m. The Pandemic Media Team will meet on Monday, April 12th at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, April 14th will be a very busy day for our church. We will start off the day with our Neighborhood Center food distribution. Please arrive at 10.30 a.m. to help set up before the giveaway begins at 11. Again, our distribution now runs from 11 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. And then Wednesday evening, we will have our church prayer meeting at 6 o'clock p.m., immediately followed by our deacons meeting. And to round out the week, we will have chat and chew at noon on Friday, April 16th. Did you know that our Enjoy Ministry has weekly office hours? If you are having a technical issue, feel free to reach out to our techs at one of the following email addresses. You can reach them at seniortech at luthericechurch.org or enjoy at luthericechurch.org. Office hours are, are on Wednesday from 1.30 to 3.30 and on Fridays from 3 to 5 o'clock p.m. Reach out and schedule a time to get your computer questions and issues addressed. Our reading challenge for the next six weeks is to read the resurrection narratives in the New Testament. And this week we will focus on the narrative from Mark 28. As you read, discern the similarities and the differences in each. Also, we are looking for readers for our virtual service. We are looking for people who are willing to video and record themselves reading a scripture for our Sunday service. The church will provide the scriptures. All you have to do is read. Also, our senior texts from Enjoy Ministry can help you with the recording. So if you're interested, please reach out to the church office to sign up to read one of our scriptures for our virtual service. Looking for further connection with Luther Rice Memorial Baptist Church? 
we invite you to use the virtual connection and prayer request card. All links can be found in the chat box on Zoom and on our Facebook and YouTube page. Need information on any of these church activities? Please feel free to call or email the church office at 301-593-1130 or via email at office at lutherricechurch.org. I invite you to join us this morning for our congregational call to worship. I'll read where it says one. I invite you to join in where it says all. This new day is fresh with possibility to encounter the living Christ. With bright eyes, let us search. This new day is fresh with possibility to understand the living Christ. With engaged minds, let us ponder. This new day is fresh with possibility to be moved by the living Christ. With compassionate hearts, let us feel. This new day is fresh with possibility to respond to the living Christ. With solid devotion, let us follow. This new day is fresh with possibility to serve the living Christ. With humble intention, let us act. This new day is fresh with possibility to praise the living Christ. With strong voices, let us sing. Let us pray together, beloved. Gracious and almighty God, we thank you for another Sunday morning's rising. We thank you for the technology and for the wisdom that you put into human minds and hands that allows us to gather together virtually. We ask you to bless every household, whether it be morning, noon, day, or night, that is entering into your presence through this worship service. We pray that in our individual homes and spaces, cars, even if we're out on a walk, that you would remind us that you are with us, that you are carrying us, that you are keeping us. We pray that this worship service will remind us that you are a true and living God that deserves worshipers who are mindful, who are loving, who are caring, and who are compassionate and willing to make a change in the world around us. Let let today's worship service make a difference in our hearts, in our minds, and in our feet. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, all God's people say together, Amen. Today's Profiles in Strength is brought to us by Sister Harmony Awani. Catherine G. Johnson was a mathematician at the NACA, predecessor to NASA. She was responsible for calculating the trajectories for early American space missions. 
Long before she helped develop the mathematical formulas that got Americans into space, she was born Catherine Coleman in White Sulphur, West Virginia on August 26, 1918. Johnson was one of the first black students to attend West Virginia State College. In 1953, she joined a team of human computers performing complex calculations for early space missions. She worked in a segregated all-black department, the West Area Computing Unit, under Dorothy Vaughn. In 1962, she calculated the trajectory for the Friendship 7, making John Glenn the first American to orbit Earth. In fact, Glenn refused to undertake the mission until Johnson personally ran the numbers for his trajectory. She also contributed to the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969 and the rescue effort for the Apollo 13 astronauts in 1970. In 2015, President Barack Obama presented her with the Presidential Medal of Freedom Tuesday, November 24th, 2015. Sadly, on February 24th, 2020, Katherine G. Johnson peacefully passed away. Katherine Johnson helped our nation enlarge the frontiers of space even as she made human strides that also opened doors for women and people of color in the universal human quest to explore space.
is now time to worship through giving and to pledge our support to the work of God in this church and the wonderful ministries we serve. For our virtual services, we have several ways you can give. Feel free to use PayPal and the address treasurer at luthericechurch.org or you can reach us by mail at 801 University Boulevard West, Silver Spring, Maryland 20901 or via Cash App and the address dollar sign Luther Rice Memorial. Remember, for our electronic giving, always look for the steeple to know you're in the right place. Feel free to reach out to our senior tech at LutherRiceChurch.org if you need any assistance with electronic payments. We thank you for your continued giving and support of our church, church ministries, and those we serve. Please pray with me. Lord, we come today with our gifts, asking your blessing, that these gifts may be used for the enrichment of your community and to help those who need it. In Christ we pray, amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. There is no Sunday that we gather together that there isn't much to pray about and many to pray for. As a congregation, we go to God in prayer, along with our sister, Julie Beringer, and the loss of her beloved daughter. We pray for her daughters, her granddaughters, her grandchildren that are yet on the way. We pray that the family of Sister Tara will find peace and strength as they face each new day. We pray that prayer for all of those who we know have lost loved ones. We continue to pray for those who have been affected and impacted by the coronavirus. We know that in some countries, in some parts of the world, the COVID numbers are again rising. We pray for those who have been traumatized and are still being terrorized because of hate in their heart for our Asian brothers and sisters. Let us pray for all those who have not just been affected, but those who are worried that today might be the day that they are accosted, belittled, shamed, or harmed. Let us pray for those who are impacted by the murder trial of Mr. George Floyd. And there are a countless number of other names we could call of families who have lost their loved ones senselessly. I invite you in this moment, in this space, wherever you are, to call the names of those who you know. And it might even be people you don't know, but you've seen their names on the television, or you've read about them in newspaper, or somebody else even told you about them. Ask God to bring those names to your remembrance so that we can say them out loud. I even invite you to share your own name. We promise that we won't tell. We call these names out because we are affirming our belief in the fact that God does indeed hear and answer our prayer. Let us pray. God of our hope, God of our silent tears, God of our weary years. Some, to, some of us come in this moment heavy, burdened, and unsure of what to do next. God, we pray that in this moment you would give those who need it rest. The ability to rest in the fact that they are not going through what they're going through all alone. 
We come to you, God, because we believe that you not only hear, but that you answer our prayers. Some of us have circumstances and situations that we believe that you are the only one who can carry us through it. Some of us come praying, even with some doubt in our heart, not sure, but we're at the end of the road when we figured we've tried everything else, so we might as well try bringing it to you. God, we come right now in this moment calling on your name intentionally and purposefully because we stand in, because we are standing in the gap for a people, for a country, for a world that needs the kind of touch that only you can bring. God, we know that you are looking for willing hands and willing feet and willing mouthpieces to be the change that is so desperately needed in the world. So we come asking you, God, to give us the courage to say, it's me, it's me. Use me, Lord, use me in a mighty way. We also come in this moment confessing that there were times we could have intervened. There were times we could have said something. There were the times we could have done better on behalf of our brothers and sisters that are hurting, that are suffering. God, we come confessing all of those things and grateful that you take our sins and you cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered by you anymore. God, help us to be repentant, not with a sorrowful head, but within a spirit and a mind and a heart that's willing to make amends for those bridges that we burned, for those feelings that we've hurt, for those things that should have been better left unsaid. In this moment, God, help us to forgive ourselves as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. God, help us to know that you are willing, are able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can think, ask, or imagine even in this moment. Help our trust to be built up in you. Lord, your word says that we but say to the mountain, mountain thou be removed, that it will be cast into the sea. So God, help us to have faith, not just the size of a mustard seed, but faith that grows every day in every way. God, we love you, we worship you, we adore you. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior, let God's people say together, amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 to 23, and is brought to us by Sister Joanna Kong. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, 
receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the help you sent. Watch me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness. Thank you for your nail-piercings Wash me in your cleansing flow Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the sea
Over the next 43 days and five Sundays, we're going to focus on what it means to live in the shadow and the brightness of the resurrection. What does it mean to be Easter people? You know, every Sunday is a little Easter, but we want to journey with the disciples and explore the beginnings of what it means to live a mysterious life of faith together. Though Easter is a one day celebration, it is also something that we as believers and the risen Christ need to be figuring out how to live each and every day. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, if there was ever a time and a moment when your people need to hear from you, it is right now. God, speak to us in a way that we know that you have our hearts, our minds, our desires, and our needs in your hand. Breathe your fresh breath into these all who hear your word in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. All God's people come together and say, Amen. Now we meet the disciples where we left the women in the Gospel of Mark on last Sunday. We meet them in the misery of uncertainty. Uncertain, scared, and unsure of what to do next. We meet the disciples in what I want to call the upper room. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us where the room, if it was the same room where they had the Last Supper, but I just imagine that it's in the upper room. So consider with me today the thought and the theme in the upper room. The disciples were locked up in fear. Now, honestly, fear is a valid reason, is a valid response sometimes to the actions around us. The disciples had good reasons to be afraid. I know we make fun of them, we tease them, we call them out. But when you read the narrative of the resurrection in the Gospel of Matthew, it talks about that the word was put out, that the disciples were the ones who stole Jesus' body. So there definitely was a hit out on them. They were afraid because they were knew they were being accused of stealing the body, even before Jesus was murdered. They were considered guilty by association, which is why Peter denied so vehemently that he didn't know Jesus. Fear sometimes drives our actions and even our inaction. Fears we know start wars and family feuds. Yes, even though when I talk about it, there are fears in the church and we as individuals have fears. Now, some of you may say, if I say, what are you afraid of? We'll say, oh, nothing, just, you know, spiders or, you know, um, my car breaking down on the beltway. You may even say, I'm not locked up. Now, I may be in quarantine, but I'm not locked up. I'm free. So then what does being locked up look like today? You know, I believe that we have to sometimes look at the offense, look at the behavior, look at the things that we say and work backwards to find out what has us locked up. If you're someone who I can confess sometimes like myself, who always takes offense or whatever sounds even a little out of the way, locked up. Mistakes become a contradiction, become a deliberate attack against you and the work you are doing, you locked up. It has to be your way or no way, locked up. 
If you are solo, you know I'm the lone ranger. I can always get it done and get it done right. I'm the only one locked up. When we can recite every negative thing that's ever been told to us, but refuse to get professional help, even when it's free or low cost, locked up. When we get in a place where we don't want to change and we can have a thousand reasons why something can't change, but refuse to consider the 2,000 reasons why we might need to change or even try it again, locked up. The locked up room represents the places we hide due to our fears, where we escape mentally, physically, emotionally, and might I even add sometimes spiritually. It is a symbol of how we try to compartmentalize our lives. The first question we have to ask ourselves today is, what have I locked up due to fear? What doors have fear locked up in my life? And let me even take it further out of the church realm. Maybe you have always thought, I want to be this thing or that thing, but you're like, oh, I'm too old to go back to school. I'm too old to take a training class. I'll never learn those computers locked up. The church, if we're honest, in the pre-pandemic world, for many of us was that upper room. It was the place where we hid our Jesus away from the regular world. It's the place where we did our thing that was our Jesus thing, our church thing, so we could go out and be in the world. But the pandemic for so many of us has brought the church back into the center of our lives. Jesus appears and says, peace be with you. Jesus, who is himself the door of the sheep, comes right in through the midst of the locked doors. He doesn't ring a doorbell. He doesn't have a key. But Jesus shows up and appears in the midst of their fear. Nothing quite like fear, doubt, and death brings Jesus to the center of ourselves. Again, we have to ask ourselves, what have I locked up due to fear in my life? When Jesus appears and says, peace with you, this peace, the first peace brings calm. It brings tranquility. It is the shalom peace that the gospel, that the Bible always speaks to. This peace, the first peace. Now, first I say, because Jesus brings two kinds of peace into this locked room. Let me say this first peace. We love this peace. As we go, we love this peace. This is the peace we testify and brag about as Christians. You know, this is the peace that is the calm after the storm. The kind that Jesus spoke to the stormy sea. This is the one that settles our nervous stomachs and allows us to sleep after weeks of waking up and being awake during the night worrying about one thing or another. This is the peace of victory. Jesus showed them the wounds in his side and in his hands. The disciples rejoice, and so do we when Jesus speaks this peace. But, y'all, there is a second peace. When Jesus says, peace be with you, the second time, Jesus also issues a challenge. After the calm, there is a challenge. The peace that Jesus brings calms and challenges us. As Jesus has sent me, so I am sending you. As I go, so you go. As I go, so we go. As we go. The disciples were sent and so are we. You is plural. The disciples were sent on a peacemaking mission. Now, a peacemaking mission. Mission. A peacemaking mission. Not a peacekeeping mission. Like those who work for the UN, you know, the United Nations, a peacemaking mission. Like those, though, who work for the UN, we are expected to go into dangerous places and take care of dangerous things. Jesus said, I am sending you as God has sent me. Jesus, the one who was murdered. Jesus, the one who was murdered and just showed them his nail scarred hands and the wounds in his side. Jesus. The one who was persecuted, arrested, judged, and sentenced to death. Yes, that Jesus told them, and that same Jesus is telling us. As G he's, he's saying, as God sent me, so I send you. Abort, abort, danger, danger, abort mission. This is the time when we say, Houston, we have a problem. How are you with the wounds and the scars 
sending me out to say, do what I did. That is when we have a problem. Now, I know sometimes people don't like it when I say it, but Jesus is the problem in this text. He comes bringing peace and bringing problems. He brings the calm, then issues a challenge. The challenge is to go and do. As a church, we are called to go and to do. As believers in God, as one who wants that shalom, true and quell peace, we have to go and do. As we go, we do. The word doesn't say say, but it says do. The doing is outlined in those final two verses in this section of scripture. In verses 22 and 23. Receive the Holy Spirit and forgive sins. Jesus' peacemaking mission was risky business. Jesus' peacemaking mission was to upset the status quo. Remember the times when Jesus came and healed on the Sabbath? For the woman who was born over and had been built had been bent over for so many years and he came and said today is the day to set Abraham's daughter free all the times when Jesus came and did those things that had been taught not to do in the temple like eat the consecrated bread Jesus's peacemaking mission when they came saying this woman had been caught in the very act of adultery Jesus said yes but who has cast the first sin Jesus' mission was to go against the norm, to go against the grain, to upset the apple cart, and to make things right. Not human right, but divine right. Not morally right as we see it, but theologically right. The forgiveness of sins is centered in Jesus' teachings and his actions about sin. Let me say it again. The forgiveness of sins is centered in Jesus' teaching and actions about sin. If you want to know how to handle something that you think is a sin in somebody else's life, then go and look and see how Jesus handles sin. It's not about moral failings, but about those who are blind to the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus came to bring about a new order and a new creation, to bring in a new wave of God's love to be seen in a more real, up-close, and personal way. Our work is to make God known in Jesus to the world. Our work is to make God in Jesus known to the world. We are to be an increasing, endless, relentless witness to the identity of God as seen in Jesus. We are to bear witness. We are to be an unceasing, endless, relentless witness to the identity of God as seen in Jesus. We are not arbitrators of what's right and wrong for piety's sake or, you know, for religious show. To be the Christian who always knows all the scriptures and says all the right things and be seen by everyone as the one who has it right. Our job is to bear witness to the love of God in Jesus. Our mission is not just to tell the good news, but to be the good news. Are you the good news? Am I the good news? Are we together the good news of God as seen in Jesus Christ? In word and deed, do we carry about the love of God in Jesus? Do we bring hope, healing, and even controversy for the things that the world thinks is right? So that the love of God can be seen. Let me just be, remind you again. Jesus' doing got him killed. It got John the Baptist's head cut off. If the doing ain't risky, if it's not a challenge, then it just might not be God's work. Jesus' second peace, the second time that he said, peace be unto you, brings to us a challenge. The peace that Jesus brings calms us. And it challenges us to do a dangerous work. Jesus speaks peace twice to calm, challenge, and to confirm. With the challenge comes the confirmation. The resurrected Jesus answers every promise that Jesus had already given. Jesus confirms his promises. He confirms the promise of God in and through him. If you've ever read, read the book of John, if you haven't, I invite you, lose yourself in the 15th and 16th and even the 14th chapter of John um, and read it. And Jesus promises peace. Jesus promises joy. 
and a life guided by the Spirit to do even greater works. He says, greater works than these will you, my disciples, do. In ways big and small, or ways that will be too numerous to recount, God, through Jesus Christ, promised the disciples and therefore promises us to do greater works. So what do those greater works look like? Their greater work looks like not just feeding, but finding ways to end the reasons why there was such a disparity in who can get food and where good food options are. Greater work starts out with us not just shaking our heads at the bad thing that's hidden in the news, but to actually be in people in our community that are making sure some of these bad things that we shake our head about, these bad things like people who are not from this country being treated bad and knocked down or being locked up out of being locked out of services they need like health care, like food stamps, like affordable housing. It means we come as the church, as the representatives of the love of God as seen in Jesus so that greater works can be done. The word says that God can do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. So if we would just do, God will make it even bigger than what we first thought. The resurrected Jesus confirms the promises of peace, of joy and life guided by the Spirit. And therein lies the good news. Jesus gave joy, peace, and life guided by the Spirit so the disciples and so that we could do the work, the dangerous work, the risky work. When you have joy and peace and the Spirit, the dangerous work doesn't become less dangerous, but you become more confident. We become more bold. We become more excited about doing these risky, dangerous things that God has because we know that God is going to show up and show out through these hands and these feet and through these lips. Jesus brings the peace that calms, that challenges, and confirms. The good news today is not that just Jesus appears behind the locked doors. It's not that Jesus has wounds to prove that he did indeed die. The good, that's good news, but it ain't the good news. The good news today is that every promise Jesus made was fulfilled so that the church could live out the Jesus mission in the world. The good news of Easter is never just about God conquering death. It is always a statement about the ongoing mission, the ongoing work of the love of God as seen in Jesus Christ in the world. Jesus lives not just because he can walk through closed doors and show his wounds. Jesus lives because he can breathe new life, fresh life into disciples and commissions them to continue his work. Jesus lives but because he can still breathe new life. And still commission others. And others put in your own name. Say Jesus lives because he can still breathe new life into me. And still commission me to carry out his work. Jesus lives as we go and we do. Jesus lives because Jesus can breathe new life into us. And commission us to continue his work. As we go, we do. So as I close today, remember, as we go, our mission is not just to tell the good news, but to be the good news. Are you the good news? In word and deed, do we carry about the love of God in Jesus? Do we bring hope, healing, and controversy? Almighty and gracious God, we pray that in this moment, you help us to be calmed by your presence, but also to be challenged by it. We thank you in advance for the ways that you're going to bring joy, peace, and confirmation into our lives. We thank you for the fact that your Holy Spirit is already available to guide us as we carry out the work you have for us. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We together say amen.
Now I must confess, I'm in danger of doing what many preachers and pastors do, is to first invite you to join the church. But today I want the first invitation to be an invitation to really become a disciple of Christ. And this goes to those of us who already consider ourselves baptized believers. I'm inviting you to renew your dedication in light of all that has gone on in the past month, in the past year, maybe even in the past two years. I don't know what's happened in your life. I don't know what you have seen, what things that have gotten you locked up. I don't know what things are worrying you, what things that may bring you to this moment, to a point of desperation, or what is causing you to be afraid, or what is even causing you to be uncertain. One of the things that this pandemic has taught us as a church is that location matters so much less. It is more about a desire and a commitment to carrying out the mission of God. This call today is for those who want to join us as we go to fulfill our peacemaking mission. Yes, with a new pastor and people, it is a time of uncertainty for us. It is definitely a time of transition, but just like we said last Sunday, sometimes uncertainty opens the door to amazing possibilities. So come as we go to be and to see and to do all that God would have us to do in the world. Jesus will meet us at our place of uncertainty, fear, and desperation. And even though the disciples did not talk, I invite you to open up your mouth and open up your heart. Be honest about the things you know you're afraid of, or the things that you feel like you're uncertain about, as a church and as individuals. Second, the call to discipleship, and again, second is not an order of priority, is to call for those with, who are not associated with church, who maybe this may be your first time hearing a message, or it's the first time in a long time, or you feel, or you're asking yourself right now, are you talking to me? Today's message is that Jesus will meet us all at our place of uncertainty, fear, and desperation. That no matter what's happening in your life, what you are feeling in your heart, what you may even have right now swirling through your head, no matter what is happening around you, God cares for you and God loved you already when God sent Jesus into the world just for you. Now, while the disciples don't talk, maybe we should. Maybe in this moment, if you wonder, is she talking to me? Yes, God is talking to you. So I invite you to somewhere in the chat. Again, if you are someone who is accepting our call to come with us as we go, or you are accepting God for the first time into your heart, I invite you to put your name in the chat and know that we will pray for you. We will pray with you. And if you allow us, we at the Luther Rice Memorial Baptist Church will journey alongside of you. As we go together, we want to do the peace making work of Jesus Christ in the world today. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your will. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. Today, some word was said, a song was sung, something that touched your heart, 
that engaged your mind and gave your feet strength enough to run on just a little while longer. I invite you to join us in today's closing prayer. I invite you to take a prayer posture in your heart while you keep your eyes on the screen so that you may see the words and pray along with us. Let us pray. Lord, the resurrection of your son has given us new life and renewed hope. Help us to live as new people in pursuit of the Christian ideal of love. Grant us the wisdom to know what we must do, the will to want to do it, the courage to undertake it, the perseverance to continue to do it, and the strength to complete it. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say together, wherever you are, amen. Allow me to give you the benediction. May the loving power of God which raised Jesus to new life, strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with the joy in the faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we virtually meet again in this space. May God bless you. Let the church say A special thank you to our friends, visitors, and church family for joining us today. We are so glad you chose to worship with us at Luther Rice Memorial Baptist Church for our virtual service. To Pastor Alicia, Brother Dwayne, the Pandemic Media Team, Church Soloist, Psalmsis, our website, folks, our tech crew, Everyone who participated in and prayed for this virtual service, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And remember, things are loosening up, but we must remain vigilant to help stop the spread by remembering the three W's. Again, wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Let us all continue to stay positive so we can test negative. We look forward to seeing you all right back here next Sunday, starting at 9.30 a.m. for Sunday school and then 11 o'clock service. Wishing you and yours a wonderful Sunday, and we'll see you all soon.